as governor of the great state of Alabama, I am proud to welcome you to Alabama. We are delighted that you are here. We are proud of you and for what you are doing for, during your time here in Alabama, but even more about what you're going to do. I'm Kay Ivey, and thank you for the opportunity of being with you today. Um, the Air Command and Staff College is world-renowned in the work that it does to pre prepare military leaders for the future. My father served in World War II, and he was a proud captain, field artillery man, and finished out his career in the National Guard. Though I've never served in the military, I certainly have a, an appreciation for what it's all about. And unless somebody has really actually served in the military, one can't fully comprehend the level of sacrifice that military service requires. But you do. You, while you're here in Alabama, shoot some of you come and you have to stay for months to complete the training that you get here. And you're here without your families, most of you. Without your f friends back home. You're not even here with your country. And you represent 68 countries. But you are here because you want to serve. You're here because you want to get better at your craft. And you're here because you want to give back to your home country the very best that you can offer. So no matter what country you call as home, I personally want to thank you for your willingness to serve your fellow man. We're in this together, all of us, to serve our fellow man. So thank you for that. Your group today is um, made up of distinguished military personnel from 68 countries and 69 if you count the United States. And your group epitomizes the motto of the United States, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one. And each one of you represents the best and the brightest that your country's military has to offer. You are here at the Air Command and Staff College because somebody saw a flicker of potential in you, an endless wick of possibility. And you have come here today so that you can be fine-tuned to be more aware and understand the real problems that confront our world today and so that you can have a better understanding of how to prepare solutions to confront those challenges head on. And you know, as I look around this room, I can't predict what your future is going to hold. But know this, whatever your trajectory is, leadership is not what you know, but it is what are you willing to do with what you know. That is the real mark of leadership. And as the governor of the great state of Alabama, it's my honor to set the tone for leading our great state. And like you as military leaders, you have to realize the gravity of decisions that you make and the outcomes of those decisions. I have to do the same. And just as military men and women in your group today, you've got to assess what lies ahead of you and make calculated determinations of how to proceed. I too, as governor, have to do the same thing. And around our world today, there are many, many challenges. Our world, our, all the governments in our world are facing huge challenges, whether it's terrorism, or the economy, or civil unrest, or even just the everyday trials of everyday living. Leaders around the world are making decisions that relate to these challenges. And in our system of government here in Alabama and the United States, my role as governor is to set the agenda for the state. I must identify problems and offer solutions. 
You see, leadership is not simply about just being able to point out what's wrong and saying that's wrong. Leaders are not just to complain, but they are to offer solutions. Here in Alabama, I've only been in office now for three months, and I've identified three main challenges that we face here in our great state. Education, infrastructure, and economic development. And like most issues that are faced by leaders, these are single issues, but yet they're intertwined one with another. If you look at education, education for us in Alabama is sort of the heartbeat of our great state. For the outcome relies on men and women, young people and not so young, being well trained and have a good education so that they can have a good paying job, earn well, provide for their families, own a home, and send their young people to college or to further training. And education is it's expensive. It's expensive everywhere, but we cannot just throw money at the problem. Just as you have to be strategic on the battlefield, we have to be strategic with our resources that we devote to education. And that means we should invest our resources in our teachers to equip them to be effective and to have students learning at high standards. My goal is that for teachers to teach so that students can achieve and achieve high standards, especially in the STEM subjects. And the STEM subjects are becoming more and more important every day. We also should be careful that in, as leaders we do not place unnecessary burdens and unnecessary paperwork on our teachers. Rather, we should strive to keep them free so they can spend their energy and their talents and their time helping students learn and learn with understanding at high standards. I too am a former teacher. I finished Auburn University with a, in, taught high school in the secondary level, English, social studies, civics, speech. And I know the importance of a strong educational foundation. That's why I'm so proud that here in Alabama we have a strong pre-K or early childhood education program, believing that if we work with our young people at an early age, if they have any dif difficulties or uh, problems, we can discover those and try to intervene, but also we can teach them to read at an early age. And when a child can learn to read, they're well on their way to success. And just as pre-K provides a strong foundational structure for our education efforts, so too um, we must have a strong foundation for our infrastructure. Because the infrastructure with our roads, bridges, airports, and uh, uh, waterways have to be maintained if the wheels of commerce are going to continue to roll. So having a strong infrastructure is essential to our great state. Our state's infrastructure is aging, however. It's very difficult to uh, maintain the roads and bridges that we have, and there are some that need to be replaced and rebuilt. We've got in some cases where a school bus has to go 12 miles out of its way to avoid going over a damaged bridge. So we've got needs that in infrastructure that need to be addressed. As our lives become more intertwined in the 21st century, we all need a 21st century um, advance in our infrastructure as well. And to do that, we just flat need more money for our roads and bridges, for example. To do that takes money. And um, I'm going to share a predicament that I just finished getting into that you may face in your career as well. To try to get more money uh, in our uh, government, in our coffers, to pay for road and bridges, I asked the legislature to increase the revenues by raising the gas tax. A small amount hadn't been raised in over 20 plus years. And um, that was not a very popular move for me to make. But it was the right move as a new governor taking the head of state to tell people the truth. Our roads and bridges need repair, need replacing. 
and we need to raise a gas tax to do that. So there are times when real leaders have to do what's right even though criticism may follow. Now, I, I stood up in the legislation and advocated for that gas tax. It was not passed. And we still need money to fix roads and bridges. But it was right then, and it's right now, that our people need to be able to have safe transportation on our roads and bridges, and we still need the gas tax. You see, as leaders, we must not only see problems, but we also must be bold enough to make right decisions and right recommendations, even if they are not popular. As leaders that you are now and aspire to be, just always know that the moment we sacrifice doing what is right with what may be popular, the moment we do that, we then fail to lead. So I just encourage you that when you make decisions, make the decisions that are right and need to be made. And though our education system and our infrastructure uh, needs attention and both, both can be improved greatly if we had more resources, we're working to get our economy strong because when our economy is strong, more people are working and more taxes come in. And we face a, a lot of challenges in our great state. But a, a robust economy goes a long way when you put men and women to work and making good wages so that they can raise their family and have a good living. It cures a lot of, of the ills that otherwise are there. So we, we put a lot of energy on economic development. The number one quest in my uh, administration is to recruit new quality, uh, high paying jobs for our state. Uh, my pledge is to increase employment opportunities for Alabamians today and in the generations to come. And so we spend a lot of time uh, seeking firms that have investments to make and getting them to invest in Alabama, because if they'll invest in Alabama, um, then they'll create jobs. Our employment rate in uh, the month of May was down to 4.9%, down from 5.4%. That is excellent news. We're headed in the right direction, down to 4.9%. That's the lowest rate, unemployment rate we've had in nine years. And uh, in the last 10 years, um, we have more people working today than we did in the last 10 years. That's good news. But at the same time, there are 100,000 Alabamians without a job. And my goal is for everybody who wants a job to have a job. But not just any job. I want our people to have a job that matches their skill set. And that's the reason we encourage everybody to pursue their uh, best skill set and advance as they can. But I want people to have good quality jobs that match their skills. Our people simply want opportunity to be employed so that they can provide for their families. And our goal is to attract companies who want to build in Alabama, and already we have over 400 aerospace and defense-related firms doing business in the great state of Alabama. And as I lead our state, my quest is to have economic growth, an everyday occurrence, not the everyday exception. I want economic growth to be very frequent. In the last three months, I'm just proud as punch to it's seen that uh, nearly $800 million has been pledged to be invested in our great state, and that will provide for some 2,000 high-quality jobs. To attract companies takes some time. You have to build long-term relationships, because, you know, people do business with folks they like and, and trust, and you have to get to know people to build those relationships. My first legislative uh, push soon after becoming governor was to um, support a bill in the legislature called the Alabama Jobs Act. We modified that bill, that act. It deals with uh, incentives for companies. And when you put the Alabama Jobs Act and solid long-term relationships together, then companies know we are dead serious about wanting to attract them to do business so they can be profitable thrive and succeed in our great state. 
recently they had the Paris Air Show, and uh, I was there, and I went on a mission. My mission was to build some new relationships, to start that process of encouraging new companies to consider locating in our great state. We've got a lot of pro-business reasons for businesses to do that. And my second mission was to solidify existing relationships of those CEOs whose firms are already doing business in our great state. On Monday and Tuesday of the Paris Air Show, I had 21 meetings with the CEOs of these firms. Three of those were brand new firms, and the other 18 uh, were CEOs of existing firms. And as I listened to those 18 CEOs in separate meetings, unsolicited, and they would talk about wh what doing business in Alabama was like and what the ups and downs were or whatever. They were unprompted. And at the end of the day, I realized that there was a uh, consistent theme through what these CEOs were saying about doing business in Alabama. In essence, they were saying our facility in Alabama is successful because of the quality and productivity of our employees. Now y'all, that says a whole lot when CEOs of these companies, global companies, point to the workforce and the quality of the workforce that we have in Alabama. That is a, that's huge good news. But at the same time, we also know that given a recent Labor Department report, the most in-demand jobs for the next few years that are coming to Alabama will be software and app design, nursing, computer systems analyzation, physical therapy, and industrial engineering. So it's important for our people, our present and new workers in the workforce, to be trained to be able to be hired and be productive immediately. Our people need to be prepared for those upcoming opportunities. And so we've, we are cooperating with and pushing and encouraging our two-year college system to increase their program and their curriculum to address these uh, high-tech jobs. And I'm trying to encourage more of our young women to go into uh, the STEM subjects to major in. Young women some, sometimes get scared away or whatever from engineering or science or mathematics, but I'm convinced they can do quite well. And as Alabama's only second female governor, I want to encourage our young women to do the same going forward. So building relationships, long-term relationships, um, the Alabama Jobs Act and the quality of our workforce are the three components of my major efforts for economic development in our great state. Ultimately, my quest is that someday, whenever that is that I leave public office, I will do so knowing that the state was in better shape as I'm leaving than it was when I arrived. And I think anyone who can say that regardless of what role they have in your home country, will be successful. And when you leave our great state, I trust you will be more knowledgeable about what it takes to be an effective military leader in your country. And I also ask you to make the commitment that as you lead and make decisions, make decisions based on what is right, no matter the pushback, no matter the criticism. Doing what is right as a leader is one of the big reasons we are leaders. Folks, I hope you enjoy your time in Alabama. I hope you'll take some time to enjoy our food, try our iced tea, uh, visit our mountains, our lakes, our rivers, even our Gulf Shores beaches, white as sand on the Gulf Coast and great waters. And truly, I hope now that uh, you all will consider being adopted Alabamians. As your governor of Alabama, I'm proud you're here. And I'm also very proud to say that Alabama is now your second home. May God bless each one of you, your home country, the great state of Alabama, 
and these United States of America. Thank you very much. Yeah.